the U.S. embargo, uh, particularly the sanctions that were escalated by Donald Trump uh, in 2018, 2019, uh, these have been very severe. Cuba has been hit economically with a double whammy, the pandemic with COVID, which shut down uh, Cuba's borders and the borders of so many countries and ended uh, for almost two years, uh, any type of, of, of tourism income. Um, and the sanctions from, from Donald Trump. And, and so the, the Cuban economy is in a very dire strait. There, there isn't enough money to actually buy goods. Uh, you can't even in the United States, because Cuba is allowed to buy uh, food from the United States under the embargo uh, rules at, at this time with cash. Um, very difficult to get fuel on the, on the international market. The um, U.S. embargo is counterproductive to U.S. interests. That's the stupidity of it all, the malevolence and stupidity of it all. We don't want to see hundreds of thousands of Cubans fleeing the island and coming to the United States. The, if Cuba had a better economic situation, if there was no U.S. embargo, um, if the uh, United States you know, had uh, economic policies that helped the expansion of the private sector in Cuba, uh, less Cubans would be leaving the island and more Cubans would be staying. So it's against U.S. interest to continue this extremely counterproductive and malevolent uh, policy at this point. So the, the embargo is a symbol of the perpetual hostility of US policy towards the Cuban revolution. Um, it's kind of stuck in that position politically. And now that we're entering a presidential campaign year next year, you know, it's very unlikely that, that the embargo is going to be changed.